All right, let's welcome in Coach Banstra, the head football coach at Northwestern High School in Ohio. Oh. The App Down Backer podcast, Coach Banstra podcast, football, whatever you want to call it, does everything. We Gap just down okay. Gap. Last time it was like four of them. I don't remember That's two, but yeah, I, I haven't really done the special teams one. I've been meaning to like record a couple of episodes off season. I just never got around to it. I mean, you don't have much time when you're a head coach and trying to do this and trying to teach full time. So, well, I just I just want you to know when I talked to Coach Prevost, he's like, we have talked about you for a second. He did ask me, he goes, now he's not married or has kids, right? Because how is he able to do the, all that stuff and be married and have kids? Uh, and, he, I'm married and, have, and have a child, yes. And I said, uh, yeah, he is married. Bad, bad time management. I mean, it's it's gotten better. Like during COVID, it, it was unhealthy and probably not good for my marriage, um, if we're being honest. But since then, I've gotten a lot better about scheduling. And like, I mean, my wife's been out with family the past several days and we were off football and I've been able to, so it's allowed me to kind of, record multiple a day right now because she's dealing with family stuff and spending time with her cousins and whatever and so i'm and we're all from football right now because of our dead period and yeah it's been good that's why you're able to talk to me for 40 minutes before we start recording and that's yeah 100 like i mean literally I, I edited a podcast this morning i've been cleaning um and then getting some some football and some other prep stuff done I mean, that's what I'll do. That's what, I mean, I don't think she's coming back it's probably late tonight or tomorrow. So I got, I got a whole nother day of that. Like that's also why I was able to sit at, at my retiring AD's house for six hours last night. <laughs> like, I mean, we, if she was there, we would left a lot earlier just because of, I mean, that's a long time to be out anywhere just in general. Especially so. when you're older, when you get older, you don't want to. Yeah. I mean, I, by the time I left, I was just exhausted by the time I left. I'm like, 10 years ago, I'd have no problem. But at this point, I'm a, I'm usually asleep before 10 o'clock most nights. So is what it is. Um, so what's it like actually having an off season this year for you? Because didn't you get hired late in the summer last year and trying to figure out last year? Um, it's been interesting. Um, obviously, there's no COVID real restrictions anymore. There's some when we started last fall. Um, but we're still dealing with all the hangovers. Like I'm still waiting on helmets to come in, mm -hmm. uh, which is a giant pain. Like we, 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 I sent our kid, our middle school team to the middle school seven on seven in Ohio state. Cause I thought it'd be a good event for them and experience. And the, that, that Monday I get an email saying no helmets. I'm like, so I was confused. And it was a lot of it's cause a lot of the middle schools don't have all their helmets in yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it. Like, and I got, I got full staff and was able to hire some good people and, um, I've overhauled, I've begun overhauling our strength and conditioning program. And I don't know why I said conditioning because I hate that word. Um, let's go, let's, let's phrase that speed and power program. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've started it. Um, my get, it'll continue to evolve. I think, I think where it is now to where it is a year from now, be night and day. Um, and that's good just because I've gotten what, what I do podcast wise has allowed me some resources that. I mean, some people have access to, but it's got me to allow ask these questions privately instead of just staring at Johnny, Gar uh, not Johnny, Joey Gar Garacio's Twitter or Tony, Ho just randomly look at Tony Holler videos instead of had Tony on. So I give, I was able to ask him questions on and off screen. I got a couple of um, the Rhode Island uh, coach Leach I was able to pick his brain for a little bit. I got, I, I'm not going to say who yet until it um, officially mm -hmm. happens, but my upcoming golden goose um, that will be very beneficial for our strength conditioning program. Um, and they've offered me, well, not, not offered, but they've directed me towards some resources that um, they use, which has been helpful. Um, we're, still, we're still figuring some stuff out. I have a really small senior class this year, um, but all of them should contribute in one way or another. Um, so we'll still be young, uh, but the, the future is bright. I mean, our, I mean I'll have 40 to 50 middle schoolers this year, which is wow. up, up 10 to 20 kids. Like we had 30, we, we were one of the large, we we're probably the larger half of kids last year, middle school wise, but we're up even more now. I mean, we'll probably be top three or top four in our entire league, um, bigger than even most of the big schools, middle school wise. So our youth numbers are up. Um, but, and then once we cycle out the small senior class, our, our high school numbers should be up pretty big too. So it's kind of just the slow build. So process, um, 
We redid our helmets, so they're now blue uh, with chrome decals, which looks really good. Last year, they were already red, so I didn't really have a say on that. Um, so there's a lot of things still overhauling. Uh, we've done a lot better with the nutrition part, which has been a big aspect of me. I've spent, as a staff and as a football program combined, I mean, we probably have spent some, three, three plus thousand dollars on just nutrition. Mm-hmm. We, we have a very, I mean, it was a part of our district, very low socioeconomic and um, they're not getting the nutrition they need at home. That's, that's right. for a variety of reasons, but that's one thing we're trying to at least curb, at least for injury prevention purposes. I mean, it should also help muscle growth, but from an injury prevention purpose, um, it should help as well. So, um, I always forget you're in charge of middle school because up here, that's not, not the case. It's not a part of it. It varies on schools here. Like if you you, typically, if you have only like one middle school going to one high school, usually you have a big say into your staff and what's going on down there. But I've also been at districts where there's four high schools in the district and there's like 12 middle schools. You have no, that's, that doesn't even factor into what you're able to do. Um, so it kind of just varies, but there's, there's good, goods and bads with it. Like with everything, just like how, how involved you are with peewees, there's good and bad with it as well. Um, so it is what it is. And like I said, you're just trying to get them and be supportive and get their numbers up. I mean, it, it helps. I teach seven through 12 during the day too. So like I'll have seventh and eighth graders for part of the day and then I'll have high school kids. So just kind of what I teach kind of lends the, that being helpful. I hear there's some middle school that don't have football. It's, you know, where I work, I guess now there's no high middle school football. It's all done through the town program, but then, the, well, yeah, like if you call yeah. it Pee-wee, but it's up to eighth grade or whatever. And then where I was coaching basketball, cause I no longer coach at three different high schools. Now it's all now two. You so know? Can, why can't we just get that down to one? Like, trying but you know what money talks so when you want to pay me to do it i'm gonna do I know. it um but the where i was basketball at they have so many middle schools because there's three high schools they feed into yeah they all have football but like you said since it feeds into three high schools not one of those high school coaches is gonna have a say in what goes on exactly um yeah. then where i'm at now you just the only thing we can do is have a relationship with the program. Uh, like they're called the Cowboys. So everybody knows they're the Cowboys, but you have to have that relationship. But the problem is when you get into those things, then you get hit guys from different towns. So it's not just the kids in your town, it's towns around you that feed into it. So you can go watch them and say, Oh my God, that kid's a stud. What high school is he going to? Is he coming here? You think he's going to your high school? No, he's going to such and such. Okay. And then you got to deal with the Catholic schools around here, popping their heads in and being like, not recruit know. them. They don't recruit them, but they pop their head in. I'll deal with the same issues with that, though. That's, I mean, I got a couple kids in some of my programs that could end up still end up at our schools. Like, I mean, they just because they got older relative, older siblings who go to the nurse school because of a variety of reasons. So that's kind of something you got to keep an eye on. And it is what it is. I mean, that's the unfortunate part. Is I mean, um, luckily. I mean, one of the schools that usually would take a lot of our kids just closed open enrollment just because of new houses and size of buildings and stuff. So that'll like long term help us. But we still have some other schools that we got to worry about. But I mean, here's, here's the thing. You start winning, that problem goes away. I mean, that's the that's the fact of the world. Now, how do you win and get there? That's a whole different co- concept. But um, whatever. that's that's what it is. Um. I was going to say something smart ass. No, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, because now a basketball job opened up at my school that I work at and coach football at. And he's like, hey, come on. So I hopped yeah. on. So now I'm down. Then I'm like, you made fun of me already. Right? Coach baseball at another high school. And well, yeah. you can hit me all you want. I loved it. I loved it. Like, I, I get why people like baseball and coach it but it's just not my it's too slow for me that's my personal opinion like i tell all our i mean i don't i have we have a crap ton of baseball kids on our football team that's fine go go play summer baseball have fun go enjoy go go enjoy like i'll try to, if you if they're nearby i'll try to catch one i got not guarantee anything but like it just it's but again i'm not i i'm football most of the year anyway so um but like i said to each of their own with what they coach what they play 
but yeah. Well, I coached track for seven years. So a part of it was do something different. That was a part of it. Another thing in the suburbs, it's hard to do basketball and track at the same time because the reason why I lost my other lost the other track job was because basketball goes into like end of February, March. Now I don't remember doing that when I was growing up, but up here it does. And track starts in the middle of February, like middle of February, they'll have a track meet. That's an indoor meet. And so it's like, well, you, can you be at the track meet? I'm like, why am I have a basketball game that day? Yeah. And so it's very hard to do basketball and track where you have that overlap, but with basketball and baseball, there is really no overlap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I didn't have a spring sport. I honestly wasn't going to. I had this mind, Coach Banister. I was like, I'm going to do podcasts in all spring. This is going to be it. And then RAD went to high school with the head baseball coach at this other school. He had said something to me about, hey, I have we don't have stipends here, but if you need a spring sport, I could probably help you out. Yeah. So then I talked to the baseball coach. I've never coached baseball in my life. I'm just going to put that out there right now. I played it. I just haven't coached it at the high school level. I helped out youth before, but like not high school. And then he goes, all you, all I got to teach you is the lineup stuff and you're good. He's like, you're a coach. You'll figure it out. And so maybe freshman B moved on over there and I had a blast. Now you said it is moving slow. I will say this and I don't care who hears it out of all three sports. That was the easiest one for a couple of reasons. When you call a timeout, there's still a bit strategic to it. Is it not like football? Like, Hey, tweak this baseball. I would call a timeout to go talk to the pitcher and it's just, how are you feeling? You're doing all right. Is everything good? Like I could tell them different things like their technique, but that was it. So there wasn't this huge pressure in baseball and I loved it. But like you said, the only thing that was bad about it was the weather. We canceled so many games, rescheduled so many games. And then there's a bus driver shortage. So like if we scheduled a bus for 3.30, we didn't get it until sometimes 4, 15, 4.30. And the baseball game started at 4.30. So that was a whole other hassle when they have a bus driver shortage. There was one time the high school had 27 sporting event buses scheduled or whatever, and there was only like 18 bus drivers. That's a problem. So they have to go drop kids off at their sporting event, come back, get the next one, go to a different town, and do this and that. So I learned very quickly some of the coaches were being like jerks to the bus drivers. I said, nope, I will never be a jerk to this bus driver. They pick us up. They apologize for being late. And I'm like, nope. There's a shortage, whatever, move on. Don't yeah. know if that's happening over there, but it's happening here. Oh, no, yeah. there's staff shortages everywhere right now. Like, I mean, that's like teaching. I mean, we're, I mean, we got positions we still got to fill and we're in July now, which is odd. I mean, we, I mean, we had some bus driver issues during the season and I think shortage wise. And like, well, part of that was, I think some bus drivers got COVID or they got sick. And so, I mean, you're, it's hard to find substitute bus drivers anyway, especially for rural schools. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's like finding substitute teachers. I mean, that's that's God, that's magical too to find some of those. I mean, yeah, and then like because all the all the good subs go to the districts that pay a stupid amount of money. Like rural school can't match some of these bigger school districts. I mean, they just can't. I mean, it's not their fault. It's just there's different income levels. No, because some some up here are moving to like two or three hundred dollars a day for these subs, and a part of me is like, maybe you do that. Yeah, because that's whew, that's good money. Now, I will also say where you are, the cost of living is a little bit more. So it's kind of that factor, it, too. Yes. Um, well, because some subs up here when it first started was like 175 maybe and at the time. And I'm like, that's still pretty good. Pretty I'm, good. Used, I'm used to like where I'm from where it's like, hey, you get 90 bucks or 100 bucks a day. And yeah. that's, that's what I'm thinking. Then they raised it like 200. And, I, and there's some rumblings of people like we've got to raise it to like 250 or so. And I'm like what part of me is like, I'll just go be a sub. And then there's some schools are starting to hire permanent subs. So they're there in the building and they'll pay them upwards of like 30 or 40 an hour to be there. And they only have to be, they have to be there for like five or six hours. Yeah. But you don't get any insurance. You got to do what you got to do to get people there. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, but there's no insurance either. That's the other issue. Yeah, but that'll, that'll start changing too. I mean, I know some school districts that do offer insurance for those full-time internals. I mean, it, it depends on the district. If you want people and you want to keep people, you'll, you'll give them insurance. I mean, that's just, it's a natural progression. 
it's like just finding teachers right now. You want to start paying better, or you're going to have to re overhaul how you get teachers because I know there's some schools that their colleges they're at like all time lows of people going into teaching. Oh, it's the same here. Same here. There's going to be an issue. It, I mean, so you're going to overhaul and like our state's not like some states are really friendly about getting non-teachers teaching licenses and how to do that. Like our state is not, they're going, they're going to have to fix that problem here soon. Like we're very, it's, it's a lot harder to get a teaching license in the state of Ohio than it is a lot of states. And it's not like we're like the premier payers either. Like we're like middle of the road nationally in terms of pay. That's how Illinois was that it be, it was very, very hard to be a teacher. And now they're going back. Because it was easy-ish. And then when I got into it to try to do it, they made it harder. Yeah. Now they're going back and they want to change it all up, which is good. But you're going to change it too late where people don't want to do it anymore. And then I know people that are getting out because they don't want to teach anymore. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I've seen that all across the board is people just getting out of teaching in general. So it is what it is. I mean, adjust, adapt. That's all you can do and as it you go from there. Don't worry. Me and Coach Arnett talked about that on the last time I talked to him. Oh, I love that man so much. I need to reach out to him again before the season starts. I text him the other day just to text him. Yeah. And even – I'm going to say this. Even texting that man, he'll say something to you and you just want to run, run through a brick wall, like even yeah. just text. I said, I'm going to just text him right now. You get him back on. I'm gonna get him back on. What a great guy! What a great. Like, guy. I, I didn't care about getting him on. Like he's just he's just a good human being. That's the thing. Like him, and then Matt Bennett is the other one. Like as much as we bust each other's balls, like I have talked to Matt Bennett more in the past three weeks, just talking about other coaches and and some scheme stuff. Like we're just going back and forth. Like it's been a good time. I haven't really talked to him. He, I will say that he was like before his wedding. I was asleep. Did he face oh. you? No, I forgot to um I forgot to tell him congrats I'm getting married. So I'll just do that now too while we're talking. He tried to FaceTime me one night and I didn't know while I was asleep. It was like eleven o'clock my time and I saw it and I go, Why did why did Bennett try to FaceTime me at eleven that's midnight their time? So I texted him later on in the day and I was like, did I miss an important FaceTime? Like what happened? And he was like, oh, we were just trying to see who would answer. Then he got married like that very next day. And I'm like, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I keep forgetting. Yeah. Boom. We would talk to him more if Coach Sheffer liked us. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Well, he, I mean, he just hasn't been doing podcasts lately. So I don't know what's going on there. So, I mean, but. It is what it is. Like I said, to me and you will talk. Us and Bennett will talk and kind of go from there. That's all we kind of can do is just, yeah. I and mean, like, that's the thing. Like, I kind of feel bad because I have so many people I've talked to. It's hard to keep up with everybody. That's my biggest thing. It's just like, I feel bad. But at the same time, it's like, it's hard when you've had 500 plus videos on your YouTube channel and you're trying to be a head football coach. It's kind of like, uh like that's why like i get the facebook notification on birthdays i have so many facebook friends quote unquote from football and football stuff it's just like i don't even comment really on any of them because there, there's like 12 a day and i'm just like i not nah, i can't no that's why me and coach coach prevost are like we don't know how you do it we were saying that we don't know how and i told him i was like he's not even seeing the big part i said you should have been seen him during covid Oh, like I said, it was unhealthy. It, it, it was generally unhealthy. Like, um, I said, there was time you're doing like five a day and then you'd hop on Sheffers at night. Like, oh, I'll just hop on this one too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Like I said, it was, it was just unhealthy. But also, like, I mean, we were, I was, we were teach, um, teaching-ish during the day. But there wasn't, like, as live it was a jump on, get X, Y, Z done. And and it wasn't, like, hardcore what you what I do on a daily basis right now. So. Oh, yeah, you're an assistant coach. 
you didn't have to have all these other that, responsibilities. That, again, like I said, you weren't teaching. I mean, you were technically still teaching full time, but not really. Like it was a different teaching full time now is completely different than what it was during COVID. Well, because were you Zoom at all? Or you guys were back in person. Uh, we weren't even full Zoom. I mean, we were. I mean, you had several options. Like you'd m- maybe meet with them for, for, like once a week, and a lot of it was just posting stuff in Google Classroom, mm-hmm. and and then having office hours to if somebody had some questions. So like it's it wasn't even. I mean, now I teach five to six classes a day. I mean, and that's how I mean that's how it was pre COVID too. I mean, pre COVID I was four to six classes a day, depending on what was going on. So, I mean, it's just a different, yeah. So, so going, going back to football, I, I veer off a little bit. We miss Coach Sheffer's podcast, but I just want to put that out there. We'll tag him in some stuff. Yeah. Um, what you, you said you're redoing your strength, and we talked before. What have you revamped? Um, I've revamped our entire speed and agility program. So, I mean, I think people who follow me would know, like I've had Tony Holler on, I've had, I've had Joey, uh, I won't butcher his last name and I don't mean to Garacio, um, on, I've had the Rhode Island strength coach on and it's, and those last two will come out over the next several weeks, but, um, just like, it's, it's a lot more jump rest recovery, speed days, support days. I don't like non-speed days. I don't, I don't like that term either. It's support uh-huh. day. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of systematic, okay, what day do we run? What day we don't run uh, and do support stuff. What is the support stuff? Um, the lifting, I'm still massively overhauling, trying to figure out the right balance for our kids. I mean, we're stronger than we were last year, but I feel like they're still missing pieces to where we get into it. I started adding like basic isometrics to kind of help with that after talking to Tony, Joey, and um, kind of reading some stuff. I mean, obviously we're not doing like the split squat holds and the um, some of the bench isometrics and the uh, stuff that Joey's doing, but there's basic isometrics you can do like wall sits. Wall sit is technically an isometric. Mm-hmm. Um, high planks are technically an alt isometric as long as you're doing them right as long as you don't have the kids that have their arms out far from you need your arms underneath your shoulders stuff like that um i've added some like banded bench because i we we can we can jerry rig that based off how our things are set up and it's i can make sure that's safe i haven't gotten to the banded like squats yet because i don't i don't have a setup to where i like how it is to where it's safe Mm -hmm. not going to risk safety um but this, so those are those things we started moving. Like we deadlifted a lot in the spring. I haven't really done it much this summer because I don't want to risk back injuries this summer. And yes, it's, uh, it all comes down to form, but I, I, they're still high school kids. They're still trying. I mean, they're going to try to do too much weight. Right. It's hard when you have 40 kids in a weight room to keep an eye on every single one of them at the exact same time. I mean, you split as much as you can, but like I said, form, form comes first and I'm not risking a back injury in July. Um, so like we're, we're big, I do a lot of front squat, a lot of back squat, uh, bench, banded bench are kind of the main core four that I kind of mess with right now. We'll do some push press too. Um, but I mean, the main thing is the speed and agility part is how much running, what type of running, um, we time virtually everything that's major. Like I time forties about once a week, we time flying 10 about once a week, shuttles about once a week. We'll do a figure eight every couple of weeks. Uh, we have, we've set up kind of like, if you see that, if you look a lot on Twitter, they, they have like this curve with like a rope that people uh-huh. run. We've just kind of set that up on our track to where you can run a curve. Um, I don't know if it's the exact same distance, but it, it's kind of the same thing. It's a, pretty much, you should be able to complete it in under 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, what, flying 15s. And the reason we do 15s instead of 20s is because when the weather sucks, I can run a 15 in my weight room. I can't run 20. There's not enough stopping distance. Right. So that's how we have adapted that. Um, and then with a sh- crap ton of more jumps, like vertical jumps, broad jumps, box jumps, depth jumps, single leg jumps. Like you, I mean, it's a lot more of those. Um, and then we focus a lot more on injury prevention stuff. So like the depth jump is kind of classified in that. 
ankle flexibility and ankle movements, just laying on your back or standing and moving your ankle in circles and stuff. Um, deceleration drills, which I really stole from Joey. I mean, there's great to accelerate, but how do you decelerate? Um, so that's kind of that gambit of stuff. And like I said, still being overhauled. Like I got a stack of books in my room right now that I'm going to read over the next couple of weeks that Joey recommended. Um, and like, I'm, I'll read one of them, try to get most of them, one of them done today. Um, why I let this video edit, edit, oh, not edit, um, transfer so I can get on, get another set to premiere uh, video for my YouTube because I got like the next three weeks already edited out. So, um, and we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, because we talked before, my friend's really big in it. And the bad thing is, he just gives me the gist of it. Like the yeah. times I've talked to him, I really have to sit down with him for like a long time for him to like really go about it. And the first time he talked to me about it, he goes, if you, he was at a school coaching girls track. He goes, if you come watch one of my off season practices or going into the season, you would think we're the laziest team you've ever seen in your life. And I said, why? He goes, cause we'll run really hard for like five minutes or whatever it is, whatever they're doing or their hard sprint, whatever they're doing. Yeah. Then they sit for five minutes and they do nothing. He goes, people probably drive by and we're sitting down and they're probably like, what the hell is going on? He goes, but I'm resetting the body. And he says, that's the gist of how you get faster. Right? And he goes, there's way more into it. He goes, but that's like an easy thing. And he's big on the Alabama strength coaches. And he goes, they don't sprint after Wednesday. Like once Wednesday hits, so they don't run anymore. Yeah. Because no, they, they, so they are, the Alabama guys are really good. And they, that's, that's what helped Indiana big. Um, <laughs> But again, there's, there, I mean, it, it, you, if you look on Twitter and you just look at strength coaches, that's the, tr that's where strength and speed and agility are going. Like across the board, everybody's got a little different way of doing it. But across the board, like even high school, middle school, like the really good programs that post stuff, it's all the same stuff. Like it's just the Neanderthals have to kind of update with the times um, or they're going to get passed, passed by. Like it's not, 95 2005 anymore like you're not not like gassers like i i kind of have an opinion of people at this point if you're just gonna bring gassers in practice like it's just not you're making your kids slower that's all you're doing like i mean yeah you're you may be increasing endurance depending on what you're doing but you're, you're just making your kids slower and more tired throughout the week and there are factors how often does a kid get full speed in a gasser like but you know what if i tell this kid i'm gonna go time of 40 he don't want to set a PR. Like I, I have two kids that bring track spikes that every time we run on the track. Mm -hmm. That's because they, they, they want because they know it's going to help them. Fine, bring right. track spikes. I don't care. I'm not going to tell kids they have to go buy track spikes. But if you run track, you want to bring your spikes. Go right ahead. You can go zooming down down the court. Like this is like. Well, then, like, how many kids have bad running form? So oh. this, so for us, uh, it's bad. We do running for them three. So we're four days a week right now, really three, because the other day is a camp day. Three of the four days a week, we do running for them. We do it every day. We like we do base running form stuff, at least on the fence, three days a week. Um, and then two of those days, they'll, they'll move, they'll pretty much do extra running form stuff. Like my, my co DC is pretty good at putting together that program for the running form. But yeah, that. And then, like I said, the ankle flexibility. I don't want sprained ankles. Right. Uh, I have zero, zero desire for that. Yeah. Then there's some like one rep maxes are kind of gone. They're, they're good for a measurement for when you can go do the rest of your workout. But like the whole, like we're at max every two weeks. I don't know. I feel like that's we, gone. We do a little bit more of it in the off season. Right. And, 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 and I'm not really a big fan of it personally, but the kids love it and love doing it. So it's kind of that concession with, Okay, where I want to be, but at the same time getting kids enthusiastic about the weight room. Um, so like we'll max out bench wise two Mondays from now. No, sorry, one Monday from now because it's our lift a thought. So and they'll be able to do all that. But outside of that, I team builder calculates their maxes based off what they're lifting for me, anyways. So right. I don't really like we won't max out again until January after Monday, like true that like. We'll go through our cycles. I think the other big thing like high school coaches miss is like deload weeks. 
like just to reset your body. Like we did a deload week right before we went on our break this past week. Um, Cause it was the end of our cycle and it's kind of just like you, your body needs to recover. Like it also depends on sports. So who, who was I talking to the other day? I was talking to a college guy and he was talking about, we we're talking about deload and he's like, yeah, my, I give my football program a deload week. I give, like our basketball program, a deload week because they look pretty hard. But he's like, some of these other sports that lift twice a week, I don't give them deload weeks because, I mean, they don't lift enough to, to get one. So right. um, I think that's – I mean, because I don't remember ever having in high school a deload week when I was in school. Like, but no. it, makes, it makes so much sense. Like, it's a week to kind of reset your body before you start a new cycle. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. It's like it's like the feed the cat stuff. It makes sense. Why not time everything? Of course, too much running is going to make you tired. Like I, I have I have kids ask me why we don't do stairs at this point. And I'm like, because it makes you slower. Like it does. It, it's nothing. To, like I just like fundamentally, I just don't believe in it. And that's I'm trying to convert some of our other coaches. Like I I I forwarded our softball coach all of our feed the cat stuff. Like here. Here's Tony Howard's YouTube channel. This is our philosophy. Like, and we kind of did a little bit of it last year without knowing it. Like, I, we ran way too much last summer. Like, we really did. I, I, I was an idiot. Um, but during the season, I don't think once during the season we ran gassers. And no, that- we st- stayed fairly fresh. I mean, I know some of the seniors were confused by it, but, like, I, 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 if you're moving well enough in practice – You'll be fine. I'll, I'll, st- I'll still time kids probably twice a week once we get the season this year. I'll do probably Monday and Wednesday. I'll time kids. And then we'll yeah. do yoga because I'm not certified in RPR yet. I'll do probably yoga instead. Mm-hmm. It's a similar concept. It's not, I know it's not RPR. Um, and I don't pretend to know everything about RPR. That's again something I'd love to get certified in. I have a buddy who's RPR, he's a head football coach in Southeast Ohio, and he also is a head track coach. He, he's, he does some RPR with his kids. So I would love – that's kind of the next – that and a master's in exercise science are kind of my next two goals. Yeah, it's crazy that way back when, that's all we did. You, We had a thing called 12 minutes of hell, and you ran for 12 minutes. And every time you blow the whistle, you change your speed. And I, Because it's supposed to represent like a quarter of football. And this is no offense to my head coach. That's just what things were done. That's what you did. Yeah. Well, that's, and, that's entirely new. And that's, that's the problem in like – and Tony Holler talks about everybody talks about that. It's like you gotta what, just because it's always been done doesn't make it right. Like right. I mean, it is what it is. But like, I, I'd, I'd rather what's the science? Like, I, I've had a couple parent because I because I put out a weekly itinerary. I've had a couple parents make a comment about because uh, what for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, my, I put in there for the itinerary rest, recovery, sleep. I had one parent yell at her kid because. He tried to just sleep in until like noon and they have a farm. Mm-hmm. Like, well, as much as I want you to have rest or care or sleep, I don't supersede your parent. As much as I would love for you, if you live on a farm, you live on a farm, you need to get work done. That's not, that's not a conversation. But right. like, again, in like, that's even like Tony, one big thing is sleep. And I'm, I'm with them 100%. Like, and our kids don't get enough sleep. And there's a variety of reasons for that. It's home life, it's the cell phone, it's technology, it's video games, it's, nutrition affects your sleep like there's a lot that goes into it but sleep rest recovery it, it's so paramount so well and then uh they're not used to that i had a kid ask me are we doing oklahoma drill because again bags on i said first of all how do you know what that is second of all no that's stupid but coach didn't you do that when you played and i was like yeah that's what's wrong with me like that's why we're not doing it yeah, we don't do a true Oklahoma anymore. Either. We have like a modified one where it's actually like handoff. Like it's that it's that multi level one. Mm-hmm. Like just because it, it simulates some things and the kid for like the first we do it the first same day and then that's it. Like, but again, we don't do the old school like hardcore. No, I don't do the old school hard Oklahoma drill. Um, but yeah, like I said again, but we see it every year. Like especially in the spring, those stupid Pee Wee videos of oh. you know, contact. Like that, that's part of me. Why part of me was like K through six, just make a flag. Yes. Like this, this is why people hate our sport. It's stupid stuff yes. like this. Is that, is that 80, 80, 90% of people coaches? No, most people coaches don't do this dumb stuff, but 
but that five to 10 to 20% that does do the stupid stuff, that's how we lose kids. And I, and I don't want to lose kids. That's what people see. Like you said, it's, it's always the small amount that's the loudest. So when that happens just one time and they see it, they're like, everybody does that. And I try to tell, I try, I'm a freshman, I'm a head freshman basketball coach. So my part of my job, which I took upon myself, which is not assigned to me, I just do it as I promote other sports. So during June of basketball camp, I told them like, Hey, you're here to play basketball, which is great. And at the end I say, okay, if you have any interest in playing other sports, you have to let me know. So I can point you to the right direction because I know the head coaches. I said, no, I'm biased. If you want to play football, I'll hook you up. But if you want to go do another sport, let me know. But a kid, I asked, why don't you play football? Because he looks like a football player and he goes, I just do basketball. And he goes, we're a little worried about football. And I had to tell him like how much safer we are. I said, we don't do this dumb stuff. Like it's so much safer than when we all played. I said, the helmets are better. The the, the way we run, it's better. Like I said, I, I was like, I remember when we had to earn water breaks. Like you had, like, you don't get water today. Like that type of stuff. Very rarely did that happen, but it's like, oh, we're going to get water. Nope. Go do this now. Like now it's like when a kid asks for water, we don't question it. We don't do the stupid drills. We don't do all that other stuff. And now we probably get more towards kids' bodies. Like you said, if it's squat day, but their body's just not reacting right, then modify it. Do this. It's not forcing this on them. Well, I have kids that like, coach, I'm so-and-so's wrong. Like, okay. Just like if we're on a squat day, just do the bar only. Like yep. that way you at least stretch out your body. Like mm-hmm. again, it's just times have changed. It is what it is. So uh, it's okay though. Like some of it, you know, like you said, gassers you don't do, you don't do this, you don't do this anymore, which is cool. I mean, part of it's like, oh, we all did this, but part of it's like, but we have to move on. Is it going to circle back one day? Maybe. Who knows? But for right now, this is what it is. I remember running stadiums. I just, with clients, I doubt it. I doubt it will ever circle back. I mean, <coughs> personally, but yeah. Um, Why are you a Lakers fan? I wanted to bring that uh, up. Because I grew, I grew up when Shaq and Kobe were, were, were Lakers, and I love Shaq with all my – like. Not only is he entertaining, but he like in his prime, he was a freak of nature. Like I don't think you've seen anybody near him, like just a genetic freak. I mean, when he was in his prime, he could move and just destroy people. I guess he, does it? Can he make free throws? No, that was not his art form. But you also he would just dunk on you all day long, and you weren't gonna. He, I mean, he'd leave with twenty eight and twelve. Like I mean, yeah. And then Kobe was just fantastic as well. I mean, he just couldn't stay healthy towards the end. That's not his fault. Yeah, that's not his fault. Like, but I will say this, you you can't respect a man more that tore his Achilles and then still shot a free throw before he walked up, limped off the court. Like, okay, respect. Like, now have they struggled recently? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we got one random championship with LeBron. But have they struggled recently? Yes. Um but it is what it is. I mean, like I said, I, we still got plenty of championships and um, I've had enough in my lifetime. And also, in honestly, it offset me being a Bengals fan for the longest time. I mean, I, I, I need I needed at least one sport where I had winning and they were the debt. Like, and I lived in San Antonio at the time when the Lakers were good. So it's either be a San Antonio Spurs fan or a Lakers fan. And as much as I respect the Spurs and that organization, they, I mean, Shaq and Kobe were just, it's hard not hard to ignore that part. Were you going to be killed in San Antonio? Because no. Lakers no. bounced them a few times. And there was actually quite a few Lakers fans there. Like, I mean, yeah, most of the city supports San Antonio. But, I mean, you got to remember at that point, that's kind of really the first major instance where they were starting to get popular and really good. I mean, they've had on and off spurts here and there, but they've only been around since like the 70s. And the Lakers have been good on and off since the fifties or sixties or whatever it was. I mean, you had the Showtime Lakers in the seventies. You had Magic Johnson in the eighties. You went in the nineties with Kareem. I mean, and Worthy. And then there was that lull period in the nineties. But then you had Shaq and Kobe. And then you've had Kobe and Paul Gasol, and now you've had LeBron. Um, and then possibly LeBron, Kyrie Irving, and Anthony Davis here in about a week. I mean, I I, I think what I'll say is Russell Westbrook is a great basketball player. 
it's just not a good fit for some reason. Like it's, that's not his, I mean, that is what that is, but so if, if, if it, I mean, they also need to, and I think they've done a good job at signing younger role-playing people, which last year they, I mean, they, they were trying to cobble a bunch of older veterans and some iffy pieces together that didn't it just did, like is is boomer bust is either going to really work or didn't and well it didn't that is what it is. See, I did not know this about you. I didn't know you yeah. were a Lakers fan. Now, now here's the thing: like I won't watch regular season basketball. No. I can't. It's like it's it's like baseball. There's too many dang games. Like 82 barely season basketball games and like 160 baseball. That's too much for me. Like give me one a week. I'm ha- I'm good. So, like, playoffs, I'll watch. It's just like college basketball. I'll watch March Madness. I'm not watching the regular season unless it's a stupidly big game. There's too many games, or like 30 games. I'm good. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch more college basketball than I will NBA. But when you coach basketball, I don't have time either. <clears throat> so the best I can do is try to watch my Illinois play. Like, that's the only thing I can do. And for podcast purposes, like, my most viewed video was about Illinois football for some reason. I don't know why, but it is. And one of my most other viewed was a Illinois basketball episode. So for that purpose, I watch every Illinois game. But I do not watch NBA hardly anymore because it's it's just it is what it is. But I did not know that. See, I I was a Lakers guy too because of Kobe and Shaq. But I was a Bulls guy because I live here. Yeah, but I mean, that's just respecting greatness right there. Like. And let's be honest, The Last Dance is probably one of the greatest documentaries that ever exist. And, like, I, yeah, it's just respecting greatness. Well, and I grew up, I grew up with Michael Jordan on the TV. Yeah. Well, that's, that's all Kobe was. Kobe was just a, it is like Michael Jordan 2.0. I mean, he, cause he, he, I mean, Michael Jordan was his mentor and he just took the bits and pieces that, and he says it right in that documentary. There is no Kobe without Michael. I mean, that's just so right. like, and they, they both have that addictive win at all costs mindset, which you don't see. Like it's rare. Like that mindset is it's the Tom Brady mindset. It's the Tiger Woods mindset of it's, it's borderline unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And, but you, you, it, it wins. Like, Tom Brady retiring for a month. I mean, like, I can't do this. I yeah. have to go back. <laughs> I have to go back to football. Oh, well, that's, I mean, when that's all you know for 20 years, it's hard. It's, you see it all the time in, in, in every profession. Like, people just, I mean, when you've done something for so long, what do you do when you stop? Like, well, you get sent to the grocery store and you're like, nope, this is not for me. I'm not, I'm not taking the kids to school. I'm not going grocery shopping. I'm going to play football again. But, I still paid a stupid amount of money to do it too. That's it's not, it's not like he's he's about to take a massive pay cut. I mean, get paid, enjoy life. Well, he's about to get paid to do broadcasting. Huge money. Yeah, but like some people adapt really well. To that some people, it's it's just not enough. That's the thing. Like, I mean, yeah, Tony Romo has exceeded expectation, been phenomenal. But like Drew Brees didn't enjoy it. Bruce Arians, when he stopped coaching, didn't enjoy it. Like, I mean, it's it's you're still trying to find you're giving you're giving up an atmosphere in sports where it's you're on and you're competitive all the time. So now you're just oh, I'm just talking to people. Like it's just it's just a, it's a different concept. True, but I also hate LeBron James. Now I can't even do anything with the Lakers. Like. I'm, I I I wouldn't say I hate LeBron James, but I am not a Le, like a hardcore LeBron fan by any means. But if it gets my Lakers in our championship, oh well. There's an asterisk next to that championship. It was in the bubble. It doesn't count. It doesn't I, I don't, it, out. It's just you can say asterisk all you want, and you can put an asterisk next to it. You still won. That's that's what matters. Like throw it out. There's no home it, court advantage. Throw it out. It's like everything else. Like yes, you can put the asterisks on there or whatever, but at the same time, a win's a win. Like it doesn't matter how it happens. I mean I usually say that, but since it's LeBron, throw it out. Like just just get rid of it. Yeah. Just throw it out. 
I'm very, I can get very heated about LeBron James. I'm just like, throw it out. I just, I hate him that much. It's mainly because of the fans is why I hate him. But like, that's why people hate Dallas Cowboys because of the fans. I'm the same way with LeBron. Like I probably would have liked him, but then it was the fans. I'm like, I can't do it. Can't do it no more. Can't do it. Um, when are you going to be a Division three college football coach? Coach, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I I just take everything easier, Devon. I got I got to rebuild this program first, and then, like I said, we'll see what happens. Like, I mean, I, the one thing my mother taught me was, I mean, don't necessarily you don't have to go necessarily hunt for jobs, but it doesn't hurt to listen if people call you. I mean. So, like, I mean, would I at some point like to coach college football? Probably at least get the experience and see what it's like and decide if I like it. But at the same time, I have a really good job right now um, with a pretty good administration and fairly good kids, and we're trending in the right direction. Did we have a great year one? No. But like I said, a lot of things are trending in the right direction in terms of numbers, strength, and speed. So we'll see what, what goes on. Yeah, put you on the spot to be a jerk. But no, I was listening to a podcast this morning. It was the uh, Beyond X's and O's with Trent right. Dover. He had Lincoln Riley on. And one thing that he was asking him about was like, what would you tell a young coach? And he goes, focus on the moment. Like, you'll get where you're going. Like, don't worry about, like, he was speaking in college terms, but then Trent Dilfer brought it back to high school. And he was like, just, just focus on what you're doing now. And then the other stuff will fall. Like, if you're, doing the best you can, you're a head football coach, you're doing the best you can. And then one day somebody calls you for a better job years down the line, but you focused on what you were doing and not per- like some of these people that do GAs, they're like, I'm going to be a division one college football coach. And they just look too far forward. Yep. Um, and it depends on situation. Like I was a volunteer up here for a year. I was looking for a job because I was like, I have to get paid. Like there's, there's that type of thing. We were doing it for free. But when you finally get it, and you're getting a stipend or whatever, like, okay, I'm going to be the best at that job. And then another one will fall, you know? So I didn't want to put you on the spot. I want to see how you answer it, but you answer it the right way of like, just focus on this now. And then whatever happens, like it happens. It just, yeah. you tell the kids that too. Like it's, if you trust the process of what you're doing, it's going to happen eventually. Um, We're going through the same thing that you are like trying to rebuild this. We talked about it. Like we're going to have like 30 freshmen out, which is fantastic if we can keep them, which is part of the goal. Um, but it's culture building. COVID killed it. Um, we changed it up this summer. June was all strength and conditioning. So that way we went battle basketball and travel baseball. Like, hey, now you have the opportunity. We'll have the weight room open. We'll have the field open. If you want to do basketball, you're going to get running and basketball. You're going to play baseball. You're doing something. Now it's July. Now it's all football. We have all football camp all of July because we get like 25 contact days. We can go the whole month of July if we wanted, like every day. And, but we're trying to do fun things like we do competition Wednesdays. You're going to, your, your squad group earns points. That's very fun for them. One day here, we're going to have like a pool day. Like, hey, you, we're going to go to the pool. Maybe we try to grill for them. Like, that's part of rebuilding culture is how do we make it fun? How do we, do things. And then as coaches, we had a meeting, like we can't be mad. And they all look at me for some reason, like we can't be mad. And then they look at me because all line coaches, we get the most yeah. frustrated, but those are things we're doing. It sounds like you're doing the same thing of like, how do we build program? How do we make it fun? How do we make it them to buy into it? And the ones that want to buy into it are going to buy into it and you do well. The ones that don't, they won't stick around very long. So we're, we're battling all of that as well. Um, but then we also lost four or five coaches in the off season. Yeah. And that was tough. And we've already seen the side effects of like trying to build in new coaches. And that's another problem. Cause I think you kept most of your staff, right? Like they all. Yeah. I, I got rid of one and then added technically three. Uh, we had to split some contracts. I got another coach in the building. So we now got kind of myself, three high school in the building and one middle school in the building. So if I ever get fired, I'll go to Ohio to Northwestern High School. I mean, we have like we have jobs open every year. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, 
speaking, which, speaking of which, we are looking for an intervention specialist right now. I don't know by the time this com- when this comes out if, if we'll still have it open, but it's open right now if anybody's looking for an intervention specialist job. Or I'll just go to Arnett in Texas. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like, when my daughter turns 18, though, like, I, I, I can leave the state. Like, I'm not saying I'm going to, but at that point, I am, al- I am allowed to the bolt. And, yeah, <clears throat> south, south, the southwest, like Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, part of Colorado. I don't really want the flat side. No offense. But I want, like, mountains if I'm going to go to Colorado. Like, that's kind of the point of going to Colorado. Um, Texas. Um, Arkansas, I wouldn't mind. Um, it's not a bad state to drive through. Uh, those are kind of where I look. Um, Missouri, Missouri is beautiful in the winter, so that's tempting. My buddy just got a job down there, so this off season. What did you think of the Chicago suburbs when you came to the Glacier? I've been to that Glacier twice. It's it's a nice area. Like we enjoyed, we ate. Um, I think we, had, we got Mexican one time, and then I forget what we got the uh, next night, but um. I forget what it was, but yeah, no, I mean, we had it. I mean, I took all but like two of our staff members up. And so I was so mad because I had baseball. Like it was yeah, like, we texted back and forth a little bit. And like so I, I enjoyed, well, the funny thing is I also saw, um, and I didn't realize it until I'm sitting there. I'm like, this dude looks familiar. I'm like, cause the, the um, OC from Wisconsin Oskosh and mm-hmm. his O-line coach were in there talking. And the OC Wisconsin Oscosh now the head coach at another Wisconsin school. Um, I'm like, this dude looks familiar. Why does he look familiar? And then Don about halfway, the O-line coach. That that's an O-lineman from when I was in school. He was a senior oh. my freshman year. I'm like, that's who it is. Like, so I went up and talked to him a little bit afterwards. I'm like, so that was a good time too. And um, we got a lot of free stuff from like Gatorade. Gatorade is giving out a crap ton of like protein bars and stuff. So we took those back and I made a Gatorade purchase order. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. So like, it's always, I, I like, I like doing at least one out of the state one every year um, just because it gets us away. Right. Like, like Cincinnati is nice, but everybody can drive home at night and the state clinic is nice and all that. But I like to get out, whether it be going to the Pittsburgh wing tea clinic National Wing Tea Clinic, where we go to the Chicago Glacier. Um, I'd like to go to Nashville at some point just because I love Nashville. Um, I would love to go to AFCA. They were supposed to do that. COVID screwed me out of that because they were supposed to do it in Lexington that year. Mm-hmm. And so they covered that out. San Antonio, like, I would love to go to San Antonio. I could have stayed at my mom's, been good. But the problem is I'd have to take four days off of work, which ain't real. Like, I can, I can take two or three, but I don't have enough days for four. So it's just like. We get. We're allowed one for your yeah. sport. So, like, we can take one off. We submit it. They're all good. So that's why, like, that very first one for us was better because it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think. Yeah. I don't remember. Well, that's, like, I get three personal and then one for coaching. So, like, I could take four. But then I would have nothing for any of the other clinics. So it's kind of, right. like, at risk reward. Well, I got – screwed ish out of all of those clinics because they had two at chicago one in february one in march the one in february we went that first day i had a basketball game so i had to leave at like three or four o'clock for a basketball game and then that one the second one i got a baseball gig i didn't know it and then i got it and we had something and i was like i'm not i wasn't prepared because i drive right by the town where it's in to get home um, right on that 88, that expressway. I have to drive that to get home. And I just wasn't prepared. So I wasn't going to drive home, turn around, and go back to Oak Brook where it was. So I wasn't doing it. But it was only like 15 minutes, 12, 15 minute drive. Yeah. But I was very upset about it. Very upset. And then people wanted me to do live podcasts there. They were like, hey, set it up and just do it live. <laughs> do something live. And I was like, I didn't think about that but I didn't have the technology. Like I was like, we can't, do it. it's not going to work. Well, it just it wouldn't be to where you want it. Like I've done like a sort of live one before it's, it's difficult. Like it's not ideal. But phrase it that way. Like you need some, some serious, some decent tech set up to, to do that. And like, that's money I don't feel like spending right now. 
Like I'm I'm halfway there. I have the sound pad and everything. That's what I use. Like, yeah. So I have halfway there. I just don't have another microphone. I don't have an actual camera. This is the webcam. Like I don't have any of that. And like you said, I'm not going to spend even 50 bucks on it. Well, you can use, you can use your phone if you got an iPhone. Like that part's the easy part. It's the, um, again, it's all the other stuff and make sure you have enough mics and make sure it's set up correctly. And yeah. It is what it is. What else did we say we we're going to talk about Coach Banstra? Oh, God. What did I text you? Because we were going back and forth because you wanted to get me on. And I was like, fine, I'll talk about XYZ. Uh, oh, football expansion. What, what, let's, first of all, they're just going to break away from the NCAA. That's, that's what's going to happen. I just, I, I'm going to be in, I, I know, I know the big, the Big Ten, SEC, and the ACC are all kind of waiting to see what, um, Notre Dame does. And I get why you want Notre Dame. I personally don't like, I don't, I think I, they're not going to leave the ACC. I mean, I know they'd get all that money, $150 million. They can negotiate getting that from the Big Ten, but they're not leaving the ACC. Like they've fought, oh. they've fought, they, they have denied the Big Ten for 40 years. They ain't going to change now. Um, to me, to me, it's, it's really, you don't leak that you're getting USC and UCLA unless you're trying to get at least two to three other schools. Right. I know, I know Washington and Oregon have both applied. So I think they'll eventually take those two on. I'd want Oregon anyways. One, you get the Portland TV market and you get your access to Nike. Yes. I mean, that's, that's the content. Washington makes sense too, because you get the Seattle TV market. Like to me, I'd offer both those and I'd, I'd, I'd call Colorado. Cause that gets you the Denver TV market and it gets you that five. You can put them in a pod. Like I, I forget what the, like, cause big 10 is big about being the, all the schools have to be research institutions. Um, for the God, give me one second. Cause we were talking about that in our, my other group chat the other day. Um, so all of them have to be, they have to be, um, I forget, I forget what the exact name of the, um, research institutions are, but all, every big 10 school is one. Um, that's why certain schools have never been a realistic, um, it's not en- engineering it's they- AAU membership Associate of American universities. Um, so like all the big 10 schools are one. So if you look at, um, the Pac-12, Arizona's one, Colorado's one, um, Cal is one, UCLA and USC are one. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other. Uh, Washington's one. Um, I don't know if Oregon's one or not. But also that stuff can be like negotiated, like – Oregon can commit to becoming one if they wanted to. I don't know what, how long that process takes, but oh no, sorry, you, Oregon is one. They've been one since 1969. So I'm looking at the list now. So there's there's your schools. Like take Arizona, take Colorado, take Oregon, take Washington as well. That way you can have a 16 pod, so you're guaranteed five without cro- like far crossovers. Um, and then there's the that's the easy part. And you could also take Stanford too if you want. Stanford's also one of them, but um, yeah. And then I saw a report yesterday that they may offer like the Fresno state and like San Diego state. But to me at this point, if you're going to lose those two and then there's a chance you lose um, Oregon and Washington at that point, the big 12 just needs to swipe the rest of those teams. Watch. I was going to say, like, it's going to be the big 10 sec. Then you're going to have, Big 12 pick up the rest, and ACC is just kind of off on their own. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, there's there's two teams that might just get screwed in the Big 12, I mean, the Pac-12. Like, Washington State and Oregon State really don't fit the Big 12 model. No. So they're, they'll have to go to the Mountain West. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you'll have that and the ACC. But, there's, I mean, there's also reports mm-hmm. that, like, the SEC's back to talking to, like, Miami and, like, Florida State again. Like, I, I, I like if, if the SEC starts poaching schools, I you could easily see like the the ACC kind of crumble. They'll probably try to join the Big Ten. I, some of them will, and then I think some of the other ones will merge into the AAC. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, or will they make will they make the Big East again? 
Will they just be no, like, let's get that going? I think I'm trying to. Uh, right, I'll call my wife back later. She can wait. So you were telling me no one to stop, Coach Banstra. I can go for it. I don't care. Like, I mean, yeah. So I mean, that that'd be interesting. I mean, and then the, does the Mac revive? Because they were talking to Western Kentucky at one point because they really want to add Western. Western wouldn't go unless they got somebody else to come with them. It just didn't – I think it was Middle Tennessee. Like, those two would be great geographic fits for the MAC, and just also from a – it would help you pick up um, two additional TV markets, which is smart. Like, the Sun, I'll say this. Like, sneakily, like, the Sun Belt was, like, one of the best benefactors of this recent expansion round. Like, they picked up Marshall, uh, Southern Miss. Who else did they pick? James Madison. Like they picked up, like sneakily, like when like Sun Belt's always been known as like the bottom one, but they poached Con USA and then brought up James Madison. Like it was a, and honestly, like they probably jumped a tier or so. Um, like it was kind of actually impressive. Like it's really good by their conference, and like I think sneakily they made themselves much better. Um, so. What I'm curious is about um, – we were talking to somebody about the Big Ten. Like, they have divisions, so what's this division going to look like? And well, if, you I, bring, I, if you bring those two over, you're going to have to bump two teams from the West over to the East. Well, it's all going to become pods with the NCAA saying you don't have to have divisions to do a tournament – a championship game. So once they get rid of that – I mean, that's what the SEC is going to. They're going to pods. So just go to pods. But again, that's why USC and UCLA need at least minimum. They need at least two to three more teams. And I think your e- your easy answer again is Oregon, Washington, and Colorado. And then if you can get Arizona, great. I think I think if you get those four, that's a good six team pod. And you hit, you get the Phoenix market, Phoenix Tempe market. You get Denver, you get Seattle, and Portland, and LA. So you got pretty much all the major West Coast uh, TV. Like Phoenix is like sneak like people don't realize Phoenix is like I think it's somewhere like top five in population in the country. Mm-hmm. Like it's one it's actually one of the bigger TV markets and people don't realize it. it. Never gets talked about. So well, one other thing with Notre Dame is they have their own TV contract as well, like with NBC. So I don't know how that works with football if they try to go over to the Big Ten. Exactly. Like, do you allow them to keep that and make that separate? And then, how much of the big of the your TV revenue do you give them? Like, that's I just I don't think I think they're happy with their ACC agreement and how that's structured to where they're not they're not going to leave the ACC. I think the only way they leave the ACC if the ACC starts losing schools, the Big Ten and the SEC. Well, that's why I'm kind of – I would just take Oregon and Washington now and be like, okay, Notre Dame, you still want to come. We're, you know, like we're taking – you're not going to play USC next year if they have this Big Ten schedule. Like how yeah. are you going to fix that? But, but they, they've dropped some of the rivalries when they joined the ACC. In the, in the end, it's about money. I mean, that's what big-time college athletics is. If you're trying to – I mean, you got to pay for stuff. Like – but they went out of the ACC though, right? They just went in for the COVID and then they got out. Besides basketball, basketball is always yeah, they, they have a they have an agreement where they'll play like eight school, seven or eight schools a year. Okay. So like and, and a lot of those schools they already played anyways. Like they've had a long-standing rivalry with Pittsburgh. Like they've played Pittsburgh every year forever. Um, a lot of those schools they've just always played. That's the thing. Like Clemson, they've played on and off forever. They've played. Um, Miami on and off here and there. They put it's mainly like title games and stuff. So like it just it works for what they do. That's true. I didn't know they kept that. I just knew <clears throat> it's, really, it's really the only Big Ten school they've consistently played is Michigan. Michigan. Do they play Purdue or any of them? Or they kind of keep them out of it? I can't not, remember. Not really. Not. I mean, not. I don't think like – I mean, Purdue might have been the only other one. But like, I mean, it, they didn't play Ohio State a lot. I mean, they didn't – I mean, so if you're looking – Penn State didn't play a lot. Michigan, Michigan State, I think, is the other one. That's who the other one I think is. I think it's Michigan and Michigan State. But, yeah, again – Travel-wise, it's not too bad for them. That's why they play them. Yeah. So, 
and then poor Nebraska is just sitting there going, oh, maybe that's also, to the big that's, also where, that's where picking up Colorado would help them too, to bring back an old rivalry. Yeah. Geographically, it would help. Like, I'd make that like a mandatory crossover game every year, those two playing. It just fits geographically. It works. So. I know Kansas and Kansas State wanted to go to the Big Ten. Yeah, but I don't think – were either one of them research schools? I, mean, I don't know. I don't think they were. That's the thing. Like, that, that's always been the deal breaker for some – for the for the conferences. They pride themselves on being research institutions under the AAU membership. Um, Kansas is in there. Uh, so, Kansas would technically fit. Um, I do not see Kansas State on this list unless I'm missing them. The problem is, and I'll say it's isolate it, again. It's about money. The problem is, Kansas brings no major TV market. No, no, they don't. Uh, Kansas State is. So yes, yeah, so I, I, I might just overlook. Neither one will bring in a major TV market. I mean, that's that's the whole reason the Big Ten added Rutgers and. Um, Maryland in the first place got you the DB, DC and New York, New Jersey TV markets. Like it's just, if you're looking at, if you're looking at it from a solely business perspective, it's what TV markets do you bring? And then how successful have you been in all of your major sports? So basketball, baseball, girls, basketball, um, baseball, softball. How was your success wrestling? Wrestling's a very big, actually college athletics. So how successful have all those programs been? Like, it, it's great if you're winning these auxiliaries, but, like, when you're talking about TV viewership, okay, how successful have you been? Kansas, yes, has been very successful in basketball. No one denies that. Um, Kansas State has been fairly successful in football. Mm-hmm. I don't know much about their other sports. But, again, again, it comes down to TV markets first and then success probably second. So – um, I think that's why on Sheffers, I think you're the one that said this, why Iowa State probably never will go to the Big Ten because what media market are they getting from? Yeah, it, you already have it in Iowa. Like it, it fits. It's great geographically. It's great rivalry-wise for Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota. Phenomenal. But just from a media and revenue standpoint, it doesn't move the needle when you're talking TV contracts to TV stations. It doesn't, right. doesn't move the needle. That's the thing. Like, you got to move the needle. USC and UCLA give you LA. Mm-hmm. They give you that LA. It really gives you all of South, Southern California, in all honesty. Um, so that gives you that. And you're talking about one of the top two most populous cities in the country as well. So you can sell stuff. And deceptively, there's a lot of Big Ten alumni that live in Southern California. Like, OSU and Michigan have two of the largest alumni populations in the country like and they're spread out through all out the country so that's also a factor in it as well did you see the picture of uh it's a usc and ucla when they see a power i team and it showed like yeah. wisconsin and how much that is true but outside of like wisconsin nobody really runs and iowa iowa does too but like like it, it's a funny little meme and i and you'll, you'll everybody laughs at it but like nobody really runs True. I mean, that's the misnomer. It's not 2005 anymore. Like, now, I mean, I don't even think Illinois runs a lot of. I mean, I didn't watch much Illinois football this year, but they would go under center. They even talking to Coach Miller about it. He was like, "Yeah, we could run the football. Don't get me wrong. Like, we had no real issues running the football. It was throwing the football was where they had their issues. But they go under center. They." They did all that, but it wasn't like Wisconsin, you know, like Drew Power Iowa was like under center with one running back. But then they had their barge that they used at Penn State that they used at Wisconsin even when Coach Miller was there and just ran the football. And then watching their spring game, and I know it's just their spring game, they look way better. Yeah. Uh, you, you, that's, that's, that people people got to understand some patience. Like I understand college football isn't built on patience, but there's a reason when you give people time, they're successful. Like, I mean, John Wooden didn't win his first championship to what, like year eight or nine. I mean, like you got to give people time. I mean, Pat Fitzgerald didn't like win overnight. Like, I mean, he's had success most of the time he's been there, but 
they've given him time to build a very good program at Northwestern. I mean, it wasn't a bad program when he took over, but like if you had just fired him at the first instance of a bad season, that would defeat the whole purpose. He's built a program. Um, that's what you want to give to Illinois. Um, just give, give coach time. Like that's the biggest thing. Like James Franklin, they, there's been rumblings for years, but he still wins. Like you got to give people time. I mean, you see that in the Mac all the time. Do you give them time or not? Like if you, well, if you want to adapt when you have a struggling year, you'll be fine. It's those people that refuse to adapt that have problems. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's not wasting time firing, you know, no offense coordinator brand UTSA offense coordinator. He yeah. was like, I'm not wasting any time. Um, I did ask coach Miller on when I talked to him on the podcast, I was like, so what was the conversation like talking to him after they did beat, you know, Illinois lost to UTSA. He goes, what was it like when he walked in? And he was, we were just like, we just said hi and forgot about it. Like we, we don't remember, like forget about it. It's what did Bill McCall their offense? It's like a, you know, I also don't remember. It was like a temp pro or something. He goes, we do want to be a little bit more like up tempo, but I want to be a pro style, like run the football. So it's he called like temp pro or something. Um, and watching them in their spring game, it looks better. I think DeVito, the quarterback that transferred from Syracuse, I took a lot of flack. They were like, oh, Illinois never gets a real quarterback. And they talked about it. And I said, well, what he can do just watching the spring game, I'm like, okay, he can hit a hitch. We were throwing hitches by five yards last year. Yeah. So Illinois will be better. Got off on yeah. my little tangent, but like, yeah, I mean, it'll improve. Yeah. And like I said, they had a very good staff at UTSA. Like, I I mean, I make no hindrance. That's probably like my second or third favorite college team just because I love San Antonio. I love the city. I love the people. I lo- love the food. Um, and I lived there for almost six years. So, I mean, like, I mean, we had a, we had a questionnaire. Uh, for like this coaches corner thing our school's doing for the highlight all of our fall coaches and they asked me like dream job and I wrote down the Univers- University of Texas San Antonio like whether it's assistant or head like I, I just love that city like it's a beautiful city great people um, so and I like I said just and you like rice too right was that the other one yeah, I, well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would love to take over one of those programs that have never won or that are young or like a Sunbelt school and just build it. Like I would love like Rice, Texas State, UTSA's State's had success, but I just love that city so much. Right. Uh, like I'd have to visit El- UTEP before I say UTEP. Like UTEP's never been consistently, at least recently. I'd have to see the weather. Like, cause there's, there's, there is San Antonio, Houston weather, and then there's El Paso, and there, that's a different level of heat. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just a different, like, it's just different. Texas is a place I'd move to, but the heat is stopping me. Well, like, Central Texas is not that bad. <clears throat> like, Central Texas, there's not as much humidity, and there's a de- decent, like, wind, and there's a lot of canyons. It's really nice. Very eastern Texas, you have a lot more humidity because you're the coastline, um, and there's a chance it's so close to Louisiana, so there's gators and stuff. So I'm not really as fond of that. Northern Texas, you'll still get some snow, and there's like parts of it still have tornadoes because you're part of that tornado alley. Right. And then western Texas is sporadic towns, and then El Paso is just, um, as it's been described to me, a heat lamp. Uh, um, it's just it's 110. Enjoy. I mean, 110, humid or not humid, is still 110. Like once you break 100, it's it, heat, humidity or not, it's still hot. Like there's a big difference between 90 humidity and 90 no humidity, in my personal opinion. Once you break 100, it just sucks. It mm-hmm. just it's like I don't care. It's warm. Yeah, I'm a big guy, and heat doesn't work well. Like. I love coaching football, but I will say this. Ask any coach I've worked for. We're walking out to practice. If it's 100 degrees, who's the first one to complain? I'm like, it's too hot. And, it's been, and we've had a pretty hot summer so yes. far. I told you at 7-on-7 seven seven we were at for the Bears, I got fried. 
just fried because it was 10 a.m. to 3 the first day, 8 a.m. to 2 the next day. Well, I've been an idiot, not really worn a hat much this summer. Um, so I, I'm still – my nose is still recovering because I have a big nose. And, like, I'm, I'm like, four layers in on sunburn. Like, that's just how deep it got. And it's just, like, it is what it is. I mean – well, every year I'm going to get a bucket hat. I'm like, I'm buying a bucket hat to, to help this out. And then I just can't find one or I don't think about it. I just wear a normal hat. And then my ears and my neck are just killing me. The, the bears thing, we put on suntan lotion every 40 minutes and it didn't matter anymore at that point. It was almost 100 degrees. And we were just like, well, it's too hot and it's just going to happen. And then I just complain about the heat no matter what. I hate sweating. I hate being hot. Now, while we're coaching, I'm fine. Once we get out there, I'm fine. Then once we're done, I complain even more. I just, I'd rather deal with heat than winter at this point in life. Heat, I I can go inside with heat. Winter, I can't drive when it's snowing and ice. There's too much risk, especially when you have kids. Like, it's just. That part, yes. I don't mind when it's like 50 degrees. I don't care. When it's 40, I don't care. But That's then, fine, but it's just the it's the yeah, I just can't. That's why people go to Arizona because there's no humidity. Yeah. It's just heat. It's just dry. Yeah, I don't mind dry heat. Like Utah is another state that's got God highly at my ranks. So I had a buddy live there for a year and he'd send us pictures, and it's just it's so beautiful. Uh it, Coach, Coach Gardner lives there and yes. always puts up a thing. He said it snowed like two months ago. <laughs> Or something I don't yeah. remember. Or he he put out a tweet. He's like, "This is the first time in two or three years of living in Utah. I try on an air conditioner." Like, yeah, like if I find more snow, I want mountains. Mm-hmm. Like, I, 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 there better be a mountain. Um, that's kind of my thing at this point. Like, if there isn't a mountain, I don't want snow. Like, it needs to at least be beautiful. Like, right? Do you think they're going to expand the college football playoff? I don't think they are. I think they're waiting. I think, I think once this round gets done, yes. I think until this round gets done, no. Like, I think, but also part of it, there's, there, there's still like three years left in this contract. So there's no point in doing it now. You're not getting the extra money. Like, it, it, again, it's all about the, the finances. They're going to because it's going to bring you money. And the bowl games are starting to get you nada. Because uh, I keep reading about how colleges are going to split away from the NCAA and they're going to kind of be their own thing and i don't know how true that is but it's getting talked about so they're saying like the reason why they're not doing it yet is because they're worried about alabama breaking away or whatever and be like we're gonna make money off of our own name we're gonna do our own thing they'll they'll figure it out like they'll 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 all come down it's gonna be like a conference agreement if they decide to they'll all sit down and write up some legal paperwork to prevent somebody just running away but also like there's no major push because the NCAA is pretty much taking off all the chains. Yeah. I mean, am I wrong? Like there's, they, they don't, they don't really monitor. What do they want me to say this nicely? What do they still monitor? They monitor their own pay for themselves. They like you, I've said this to somebody or maybe it was on my own. I said, the NCAA is laughing. Cause they're like, look what happens when you pay players. But it's like, yeah, because you allowed it to just be a free for all. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't really relegate. They don't really, relegate anything at this point like oh, i don't know what they do they do nothing nothing like because like you keep you, pretty much everything that you used to get somebody in trouble for they don't get in trouble for anymore um so i mean i mean the, the two the two major things are about the announce like they've talked about like if you pay attention to football scoop at all is one the um on um on getting rid of the 11 on the field coaches rule, which will massively, and we talked off screen about that could massively overhaul things. And then the other thing is, I think the other thing was overhauling like the recruiting calendar, which it needs overhaul. Like to me, you need a true dead period and a true on period. Like, cause even like the sort of dead period, you can still send out emails. Like just like you're either on or you're off. And, and I, the other thing I don't get is why Division One has this level of um, things, but really, like, the D2 and D3s have even less restrictions. Like, I don't – I don't know why is it just universal. 
That's the thing. It should be. And like you said, like a like high school, we have a true dead period where we cannot. I mean, you can kind of message kids, but we're not recruiting them. Like you can't be around them. You can't do yeah. anything. Like why doesn't college have a true dead period of like you can't even recruit? Go go on vacation. Go do whatever. Yeah. Like a true on, like don't do anything. And then the early signing, and then I'm tired of coaches, this whole coaching cycle of like how quickly they get fired and hired because that early signing period. Because they're like yeah. you have to recruit. That's that's that was the that was one of the fears when they put it together and it came true. It's just yeah. So I don't know. It's it is what it is. I mean, that's the thing. Like you can't, I mean again, that, but I think also it makes you either decide you're either gonna get rid of them or you're just gonna give them time. And but the problem is most the bigger schools will get get rid of the smaller schools will say we'll give you more time. But if you get more time, you're gonna get fired. They ain't gonna wait till week 12 to fire you. They're gonna fire you like week six, like Georgia Southern did to what's his face this year. Mm-hmm. So George Southern, yeah, George Southern, and then the hired. Well, I also don't blame him. Clay Helton's available, who's a pretty solid football coach. Like, I mean, he's pretty good. I right. mean, he 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 stabilized USC. I mean, I know he's not the USC fans don't necessarily love him, but I mean, he made them at least competitive. I mean, they were still recovering from all the sanctions, like, and that's what their thing people don't realize. Like, Lane Kiffin did a pretty good job at USC. With being mm-hmm. short about 20 scholarships a year. Like, don't yes. like ignore that. And then Clay Helton continued to resuscitate that. Um, I understand he's not the big flashy coach, quote unquote, but he's a pretty good football coach. So, like, I don't blame Georgia Southern's got an opening to immediately, like a week and a half, two weeks later, or whatever it was, get a hold of Clay Helton. Like, it's, I mean, just a success. I mean, yeah. Or, like, my thing is, Coaches that are hired, you still have your bowl game or whatever coming up, and then they leave. And the reason why they have to leave is because the job's open. Then they have to leave because they're like, "Why well, have to hurry up and jump on this recruiting for the early signing period?" Yeah, and it's and hard it's, to do. It's hard to do both tasks at the same time. And right. It is, especially when you're, try, you're trying to hire this new staff, unless you're taking like your whole staff with you, it's hard. Like, and that's not common. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, I think Brian Kelly only ended up taking like three or four people with him. That's probably because Marcus Freeman was able to retain all of them. Yeah. I mean, it's rare. Like, I was talking to Terry Harrison at Friends the other day. He brought his whole staff with him from Bethel, like virtually everybody. Like, and that was part of the part of the key for him to be able to go over there is he's able to do it. I mean, right. you, you, like Frank Solich at Ohio, I mean, he brought a lot of his former Nebraska guys with him to Ohio. That's part of the reason why they were so successful. It worked well together. And he's kind of added, added and lost people here and there over the years. I mean, Ohio State, like initially, Ryan Day kept everything together. I mean, he's made changes now because he's kind of had to, but. Um, Lincoln Riley brought a lot over with him. Lincoln Riley tried, tried to bring as many over with him as humanly possible. Not all of them came, but he brought as many of, I mean, because they know how everything works. It's, it's functional. Um, that's not always the case, though. And you kind of right. see that double-edged. Um, and some people don't want to, like, because it's a different job, different recruiting area. Um, like Mar- Mario Cristobal did, like, a full national search for all of his assistants because he wanted to find people that fit there, where he was retained a lot of guys when he took over at Oregon after that one year where the Tiger left. But, I mean, he's looking for the right fits. He brought over some people, but he also, like, Who's the right fit for Miami? Because it's a different environment. South Florida is a different recruiting environment than the West Coast. It just is. So, but you see in Texas all the time. That's why Texas colleges hire high school coaches and position coaches all the time because they know the landscape. Right. Because so, uh, I've had it on here for a while. So I'm going to end it with like college football talk. Um, kind of college football is kind of football. You were talking about now they have unlimited assistance, right? So we're going to see them taking – you're going to hire – you're going to promote some GAs and get some GAs up. You're going to look at some Division twos and hire them. You're going to look at FCS and find some good people to hire. And it's just going to be this chain effect of moving people up. And I've asked some coaches, and it's high school, but I don't know about college. I think there's less and less coaches out there than there used to be. Yeah. And less high school, not many people want to do the GA thing anymore. There's two parts of it. Like, the problem is – 
yes, you're gonna have a loan assistance, but how are you gonna pay all those guys? True. Like like some schools will be able to figure it out. They will find don't boosters will donate money. Um the new TV contracts are coming up because a lot of them are about to expire in the next three to four years. That's why Ohio State's making the move now. I mean, not the Ohio State, uh, the Big Ten is with adding USC and UCLA. So, but how are you going to pay everybody? That's right. the thing. Like, that's still going to be the, okay, are they going to be volunteer? Or are they going to be low pay? I mean, how do you pay them? And so that will determine on what you get. Like, if you get, if you got the financial resources, you're going to hire other big name coaches to come in and do stuff. If not, you're going to look in the D2, D3 levels, those guys who are making ten to $20,000 who want to move up and pay them. And, or you're going to find some high school guys. Like, I mean, the high school guys, you just got to find a way to match their teaching salary. If you can match their teaching salary, that's how you poach those kid, guys. Like, that's, and really the same thing. Like, if you can go from being a D3 offensive coordinator making $35,000 a year to I'm now making $40,000 a year to be a recruiting coach at Ohio State to where I'm recruiting year-round and being on the field really mostly in the spring, we're – yeah, how's that going to work? So. Yeah, or are they going to start going like – I know high school co- I know high school teachers that coach college ball – and they, it's kind of like what we do. We instead of good, stay at the high school and do that, they go do that. Yeah. NAIA, that's the, the where the big part happens. Is that going to be a part of it? Where hey, you can still be a teacher, or or they can be a part time teacher, and then we'll give you some money, and you're just going to work here when you're done teaching. Yeah, they could like, go that I, route. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how they're going. Like from what I've read, um, the ACC, a lot of the ACC schools are ready for the opening of the floodgates some of the sec schools are and then like the major big 10 schools are like they already got like their stuff ready on like who they're going to call who they're going to try hire and they got the finances in place what that looks like i don't know but like i mean the article mentioned like the acc specifically like they're ready to go um so it would be interesting to see (laughs) two two position coaches for each spot yeah, I mean, that, that, if you're running a forefront, you can have an interior and exterior coach. If you're running a big coverage package, you can have a true safeties and corners coach. If, you have, if you're running an odd front, you can run have an inside and outside backers coach. Um, quarterbacks, if you're spread, true full spread team, inside and outside receivers, um, running backs coach, tight ends coach. The real big thing is when you can have multiple line coaches. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's the that's why O line GAs are so important. Like, if you have a good O line GA, it does wonders for your offensive line. Like, I mean, we've talked to Alan Rudolph; he's had good GAs. Yep. Um, Ohio State typically has good GAs. I mean, across, I mean, the, the G O line GA, you're pretty much the assistant O line coach, is what you truly are. That's what your title should say: assistant or co O line coach. So you can split stuff up, stuff up, and you do it all the time in high school, like. Wing T, wing T, I mean, that's that's where smart wing T coaches are. They put like two or three coaches down there in the line because that way everything gets coached in detail and you can break up in the pods. I mean, Kenny Simpson talks about breaking up in the pods all the time. That's how you deal with that issue. I mean, right. That's, that, I think that's where you'll see the biggest tremendous effect is O line and D line. So you'll be able to have two D line coaches and two O line coaches or more. Well, more. I think they say O line G's are the first ones to get hired. Believe it or not, I think that's where they first look. Yeah, like we talked, like I said, Coach Prevos, he said they were looking, they were, but he's like, it ha- well, because the season's about to start, but he's like, oh, line GA is like what we need, like we need. Yeah. Um. All right. To end it, let me ask you the most important question of the entire time: Are you happy to be back coaching the line as a head football coach? Yeah. No, it's it's going well. Like it's just it's so important, and like it. Unless I could find somebody with enough experience that me and my OC were comfortable with, that's where I had to go. I mean, that's – I mean, it's it, kind of the old adage. I mean, you hear everybody say it, like strength, the opposite coordinator, and O-line are kind of your three most important. Probably DBs is probably your fourth, um, depending on what you're running. Uh, but it's just – it's too important. And at least if it goes bad, uh, it's my fault. Can't blame anybody else. And uh, like I said, it's – I mean, I get – 
plenty of any time and it's just it's a lot of shoot work and uh, base blocking drills and so forth well you're the head coach so you can give all the any time you want yeah i i, I no, honestly i i give my both my coordinators kind of here's your time what do you want like i don't i try not to micromanage people like especially if you if, if i know you're really good my oc's been offense coordinator on and off for 30 years i'm not really worried about how he wants to do things um so yeah yeah, that was the most important question I had for the whole day was because you don't see that. You're not a coordinator, but if you're the head coach, but you're coaching a position. Yeah. I, I, and honestly, it's, there's so much with being a head coach. It's hard to coordinate. It really is. It's, all, it's almost hard to do O-line too because O-line is, is borderline coordinating as well. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just it's difficult because there's you're calling the office for this or you're dealing with this this day or – there's so much off the field to do. Like I think colleges, you can kind of do a little more because you have usually have like a director of football operations who handles a lot of that middle school busing and hotels and all that other stuff. But yeah, I, I would love to get like a, a true like DFO, like some college guy who's majoring like sports management and get them on to do that. I mean, that's part of why Ohio university has been successful because you got the sports management program. And they have all like, God, there's like 12 student assistants at every sport practice. Like it's not just football. It's like all their sports have multiple because you're getting your internship stuff for that. So like, yeah. That's huge. That or like a, a media media thing. That's the other huge part. Like high schools here, they have, their high schools have their own media department. So they live shoot on YouTube. They have commentators and it gets the program out yeah. there. This and exactly. that. I know our athletic department's giving like a, I think like some sort of credit to one of our, like one of our seniors next year. And she's going to handle like most of our like social media and um, publicization for our sports. So it will be, it'll be, it'll be interesting on what that kind of looks like. So <clears throat> I did a really good job investing in some changes that to help expand some of our district stuff. Well, coach Banstra, I've had you on for a long time before we even started uh, <laughs> before we even started. But I guess the real last thing is when are, when are we going to get the four or five guys back on? Like we did all last summer. I don't know. It might, it might, I mean, if Shepherd's gone recluse on us, we might just have to pull Bennett together and figure it out that way. And I don't know. Like I said, we'll see. Like I said, the problem is you're getting to the point in the summer where it's about to become hectic. That's the problem. Like this is the off week for a lot of us or ending the off week. And then you got, I mean, three weeks of the grind. And then you yeah. get camp. And then, like, that's the problem. It's just like the ideal time to do all that stuff is the spring for us, for a lot of us, or like this dead week. Yeah, it depends on where you are. For me, I can make it work. Like we have camp all the rest of July, 9 to 12, and we're, then I go home. Our dead week's the end of July into August. And then that's where it's like, and our dead week is like, seven or ten days we, well, can't we also have a dead week of the last week of july but that's because we have fair like you, you ain't doing anything fair week and it just ain't happening in our county like most of our schools have yeah they're showing hogs or doing the calf scramble or pigs uh for this and calves for that and roosters and chickens and bunnies and horses and or it's it's everything so it is what it is yeah, I mean, it's just statewide dead week we have to take at the end of the end of the summer. And we don't have one of those, but like I, I mandate, I, I personally mandate one July Fourth week. Yeah, that's what we did. We're not going to do anything today. Obviously, we won't do anything tomorrow. We'll see them Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. just because we haven't seen them. And then we go and no, because Illinois we get twenty five contact days, so like they make you take a week off, like they mandate, like then like. Wisconsin, they only get like five days or something like that. It's very strange. Indiana is the same way. They don't see their kids as much as we do in Illinois, which is crazy. But um, Coach Banstra, thank you for coming back on for two and a half hours of Zoom. No problem, my friend. Uh, everybody already knows your YouTube, so I don't even care about promoting it. Everybody already knows. Twitter, that's all there. <laughs> 
It's, it's really not hard to find. Just type in my last name. You'll find it. It's good. All right. Everybody check it out. Coach Mantra, thank you for coming on. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.